Hello everyone, welcome. This is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Today I have four snowmen or snow themed decor DIYs for you. I'm very excited to just take a break a little bit from the general Christmas theme and get started with these. I am using these two signs from the Dollar Tree, some fabric from Walmart and puffy paint from Walmart. And my sign is made using five gallon paint sticks and jumbo craft sticks. I've shown in a few different videos how to make this. So um, I will link some of those below so you can see how I make my signs. So I'm giving this sign just a good coat of a navy blue acrylic paint. Um, I do snowmen in my downstairs bathroom during um, the winter and the colors are like a dark blue and a burgundy so um, just give this a good coat. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. We are going to distress the wood a little bit when it is dry. Here with my snowman, you'll see I have this fabric. I did learn this technique um, from Kelly Barlow of Kelly Barlow Creations. She Mod Podge's fabric, and so I decided I was going to try it with my little snowman. So the raised areas of this snowman sign, I'm going to put Mod Podge on the scarf, and then I'm going to lay the fabric over top and put some Mod Podge on top. And then once it's dry, I'll be able to use a uh, cutting knife um, to, to cut away the extra. So here you can see I'm just rubbing the fabric to make sure it's as straight as possible. Put some more Mod Podge over top, just where the scarf is, and then I'm going to let it dry. I'm also going to use the same technique here on the top part of the hat um, where the hole is for the string. This will also help cover up that hole. So I'm just going to line again my fabric up, rub it down really well, and then put a layer of Mod Podge over the top. So I didn't show on camera how I cut away the extra on the scarf, but here you can see how I'm doing it with the top part of the hat, just with my little X-Acto knife. And then you can just use your little scissors to trim up any extra um, looking at it from the back. So I saw a couple other people use this puffy paint to uh, make their snowmen. And I liked the idea of the snowman having some texture. So here I'm going to use some of this white puffy paint. I will say that I probably used a little too much. You'll see me at some points taking some away with a paintbrush. But um, I do like how this dried kind of bumpy. I did let it dry for quite a while before I moved on to doing anything else on top of the white puffy paint. So here you can see I'm just using a paintbrush to kind of try to smooth it out a little bit, but still make sure there's some texture there to the body of the snowman. Thank you. 
Okay, so once my snowman was set out to dry, I'm moving to my let it snow sign, removing the jute string, and I'm going to give, keep this project pretty neutral and give it a coat of chalk paint in the color mineral. This was my first project using one of these bigger word signs that were new this year at Dollar Tree. Um, I was very pleased with the size of it and the quality. Um, it is fairly thin still, so you'll want to be careful while you're painting it. Um, but other than that, I thought these are a really quality project if you're able to uh, find these at your Dollar Tree store. You can see here I started trying to paint all the edges and then I realized no one's probably even going to see these, so I stopped. And back to my dark blue background. I did take some white chalk paint and just dry brushed uh, back and forth along these planks just to give it more of a weathered look and give it a little more texture and interest. Using this gold paint marker from Michaels, I'm going to um, color in that brim part of the hat. You could use more puffy paint and um, make it stand out even more. You could even add another texture and use some sort of fuzzy uh, material to make that brim, but I decided I wanted to bring out some of the gold that is in the fabric on the hat and the scarf. You might not be able to see it on camera, but there is some gold in there. So I just decided to paint it with this paint marker. Next, I'm moving on to the carrot nose. I'm using a little bit more of the white puffy paint, and then I'm going to add some orange acrylic paint with a paintbrush so that it is still the texture of the puffy paint, but I can make it um, the color orange with the acrylic paint. Now while that dries, I'm back to my let it snow sign and I want that snowflake to pop so I'm going to take that same gold paint marker and just paint the snowflake. So I was really nervous about doing this part of the project because I don't feel like I'm very good at drawing faces. And to be honest, this is my second attempt at the eyes on this snowman. But I'm just using one of my favorite paint markers from Walmart. And if you're really not sure at all how to do a face, if you simply Google how to draw snowman faces, there are tons and tons of images that will come up. So you can just find one that you like and copy it. All right, so now we're ready to just take our hot glue gun and glue down the let it snow sign. I am gonna add just a little jute bow to cover up the hole on the T and then glue down my snowman as well. I'll also say if I had had any more of the wooden snowflake stickers from Dollar Tree, I probably would have added maybe two or three to the background of this sign as well, but I didn't have any left. So if you have those, feel free to add those to your sign. And here's how it turned out. Right now it's just leaning against a wall. If you wanted to hang it, you could easily add a jute string to the back. 
My second project for today is kind of a recycled craft. I'm using some cans from vegetables, a small thrift store record, some black spray paint and Waverly chalk paint. Then I decided to also make a small one and I'm using this small saucer as well. So it would have been faster to spray paint three of these cans with white spray paint, but I did not have any and did not want to go buy it. So I am using my Waverly chalk paint in the color white of this size can. And also for the smaller cans, I'm painting three out of the four to be white. And then our fourth can will be spray painted black along with the small saucer that will be made into the small snowman. So here for my tall snowman, I'm taking three of the white cans that are now dry. I did use two coats of the chalk paint and I'm stacking them, hot gluing them together. Okay, so for the brim of this snowman's hat, I am using a small black 45, I think they're called, record. And I'm just going to hot glue this um, to the top of the snowman stack. And then I'm taking the one can that was spray painted black and putting hot glue around the rim of it. I'm going to glue this to the top of the record to make the rest of the snowman's top hat. And now I'm going to do basically the same thing for my small snowman, although instead of using a record, I'm using that small saucer that I also spray painted black. I think this one was just a little harder to get it to stick because of the different type of material it was. Feel free to use E6000 if you'd like, but I did eventually get this to stick to the top of my cans. And now I'm doing the same thing with the small black can and I will hot glue it to the center of the saucer to make the hat for my small snowman. So again, drawing faces, not my strong point, especially on these bumpy cans. This is a little tricky. Um, these snowmen definitely look handmade, homemade, but that's okay. That's kind of the whimsical look I was going for. I did draw with a pencil, just some big ovals for the eyes. And you can see here, um, I decided to just use a black Sharpie marker. Um, on top of the white chalk paint. This was gonna work just fine. And I had just a tiny bit more control of it than the paint marker. So I'm just going to, first of all, draw these two black ovals. And then you can see I drew a smile as well. Here I'm using a thin brush and just using some of my orange acrylic paint to make my snowman's nose. And here's both snowmen with their faces so far. Next, I'm just taking my white paint marker and adding a little detail to the eyes, um, just a little arch at the top right corner of each of the eyes. Next, taking my black Sharpie marker again, I'm just kind of outlining and adding a little bit of detail to the carrot noses to give them a little bit of dimension as well. Thank you. 
Okay, so to decorate the hats for each snowman, I'm first going to hot glue a piece of this snowflake ribbon around the brim of the hat. And I'll do the same thing here to my smaller snowman's hat. My last step here with the hat is just to take some Christmas floral pieces that I have left over from other projects, some pine branches, some pine cones, um, holly leaves and berries to just add a little bit of decorative touch to each of my snowman's hats. Our last step for our two snowmen is to take a strip of this um, red plaid material I found at Walmart. It was a fat quarter for $1.47 and I'm just tying it in a very loose knot around this space between the first and second white cans to tie it as a scarf and then I am just going to tack it a little bit with hot glue to hold it in place. On this smaller snowman, the scarf was a little long, so I did trim it. Um, if you can't find material like this, you could always use um, felt and then cut a little fringe on it. Just use what you have or what is easy to find. I love how these snowmen turned out. I did not have any big black buttons, but if you did, you could add that as well. Here are the items for our next craft. That same fabric, some buttons, Epsom salt, two wood doll heads, salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do is just stick a couple skewers in the hole of these beads and give them a good coat of our Waverly chalk paint in the color white. While those are drying, we'll take a set of these salt and pepper shakers from the Dollar Tree and some Epsom salt. Also, you can find this at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to pretty much fill these shakers up to where the metal lid will be. And for now, go ahead and put the lids back on the containers. Once our white wood doll heads are dry, we're going to put some hot glue around the top of the salt shaker and glue that head in place. This will be the head of our little snowman. And then we're going to put glue around the rim of the salt shaker lid and glue that on like a little hat on our snowman's head. So here's that fat quarter of material from Walmart. We're just going to cut some little strips that will be the scarf on this snowman. So the first thing I did was hot glue one piece just all the way around 
um, that part on the salt shaker where the lid normally would go just to cover up those ridges. And then I took another one here that I'm going to tie in a loose knot or you could just glue it in place however looks good to you. This way you don't see those ridges on the salt shaker. Next, taking a black Sharpie marker, I'm just going to draw some little circles for eyes and for the mouth on our snowman. Then using orange acrylic paint and either a toothpick or this is the end of a bamboo skewer, I'm going to carefully draw the triangular carrot nose for my snowman's face. The last thing we're going to do on the snowman's face is just try to add a little bit of rosiness to the cheeks. This is just pink acrylic paint. I'm going to apply it with the eraser of a pencil in small circles and then dab it with my finger to kind of um, mute it out a little bit. And our last step for our snowman is just to hot glue a few buttons to the front of the salt shaker. So here's how our little salt shaker snowman turned out. I think it's absolutely adorable. You can have a lot of fun making these in variety. Our last craft for today is a little diorama box. You can use one of these banks that you can find at the Dollar Tree, some scrapbook paper, little snow globe figurines, and this dust mop head. So these white banks are newer. They're more of a wood look um, and the back is a little more substantial. All you do, and this is my first time trying this, it really does work with one of these scrapers from the Dollar Tree automotive aisle, is to just from the inside scrape off the lettering that is painted on the glass. So it does take a little bit. It might make some unpleasant noises, but it really is easy to do. I was very pleased and I'm excited to use this technique on some other upcoming DIYs. And once you get it all scraped off, you'll just um, clean off the inside of the glass. Next, I'm just showing you a variety of papers that you could use for this project from three different hot buy paper pads from Michaels, Classic Vintage. The first one was like Evergreen something and then Safe Freeze. These are the sheets I pulled from each of those pads. I decided to use this one from the Classic Vintage and here I'm just tracing around my um, frame to show which part I'm going to cut out to use as the background for my little diorama shadow box. So you can see here, once I laid the back of the frame on, I needed to trim it just a little bit more um, with my pencil I traced and then cut with my scissors. I'm just going to hot glue this to the back of the frame. So now comes the fun part where you can just add things inside to make it how you want. I'm using one of these duster mop pad heads um, and I'm gonna cut a strip of it and just use that, hot glue it in the bottom of my frame to be some snow. Thank you. 
Next, I'm taking a couple different sizes of these fake Christmas trees. You can find these at Dollar Tree and other stores. I actually got a bag of them at a thrift store. And I'm just going to glue two of them over in this left corner. For the bench and the light post, I'm actually trying to see where they would look best, but I'm going to glue these to the scrap of paper on the back so they don't flop around on that snow. I did add a little bit of Epsom salt to the inside of the box for some snow that moves around. And then my last step is I kind of folded this, um, these copper lights. You can get some like this at the Dollar Tree. I folded them back and forth to be about the width of the top of the box. And I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue to tack them in place. This way um, the cord will come out of the top of the bank and can hang on the back. And here it is with the lights. I love the versatility of this project that you can put whatever you'd like inside. And here it is with the lights on. I'd love to know if you've made one of these, what you would put inside. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed these four snowmen or snow themed DIYs. I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Here are some videos that are suggested for you to watch next. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.